Good morning. It's good to be with you today, and I'm pleased and honored to be asked to be today's preacher. So that's good that I'm here with you. The announcements are printed in the bulletin. We welcome all of you who are worshiping today with us. On July the 18th to the 22nd, at the Pentecostal Assembly in Arthur, uh, there will be a vacation Bible school. So please invite the kids in your neighborhood to come and uh, have a time for them. Then on Wednesday, July the 20th, there's a praise team practice, 10 o'clock for instrumentalists, 10.30 for vocalists, in preparation for participation in the July 24th service. Um, so please note the other ones printed and uh, if you can be part of the praise team, come and join. I'm sure they're glad to have you. <laughs> We're going to sing together Oh no, have the responsive call to worship Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Let's sing together, Glory be God the Father. Stand if you're able. <clears throat> Glory be to God the Father, Glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Spirit. Grand Almighty three in one. Glory, 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 glory. While eternal ages run. Glory to the one who loved us washed from each sin and stain glory be to him who bought us raised us up to serve and reign glory 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 to the Blessings, praise eternal. Angel choirs their hymns prolong. Honor, riches, power, dominion echoes all creation's song. Glory, 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 glory. Praises to Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O God of light, in whom there is no darkness, Look to your wayward children, forgive our sin, and give us such joy in Jesus that darkness may be driven from us and your light shine in our lives by faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Mighty God, who divided light from darkness and made the sun to shine, wake us from the night of doubt and fear, and let us live this day and every day in the light of the truth taught by your Spirit and revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord, whom we praise forever, and to him we give glory. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you and to live peacefully with our neighbors and to devote every day to your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing our great Redeemer's praise. Let's join together in singing that.
coming up. There's that good song. That's the song. Well, it only had one word in it. Me, 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 Jesus and others and you, what a wonderful way to spell joy. Jesus and others and you, in the heart of each girl and each boy. J is for Jesus, for he has first place. O is for others we meet face to face. Y is for you and whatever you do, put yourself last and spell joy. There, you think you can sing that one a bit? Okay, well, great, that's great. Glad you came today, Cunningham. And we'll put your mask back on. Let me sit and walk through your coloring while you are listening to the sermon. Let's pray. Holy God, we confess that sometimes we think the world is about us and what we want and what we would like. But you have taught us that really fulfillment in life is comes from serving others and let being a blessing to others. Because you mean Jesus to bless us that we might bless others. And so help us be that in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Holy God, our Father, you hear our prayers before we speak and answer before we know what our needs are even. Though we cannot pray as we ought, may your spirit pray in us, drawing us to you and toward our neighbors on earth. We pray for the whole creation. May all things work together for good until by your design people inherit the earth and order it wisely. Let the whole creation praise you, Lord and God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church of Jesus Christ that begun, maintained and promoted by your spirit, it may be true, engaging, glad and active, doing your will. Let the church be always faithful, Lord and God, that your name might be glorified. We pray for men and women who serve the church in special ways, preaching, ruling, showing charity, 
that they may never lose heart, but have all hope encouraged. Let leadership be strong, Lord and God, and wise and good and true. We pray for people who do not believe, who are shaken by doubt, or have turned against you. Open their eyes to see beyond our broken fellowship the wonders of your love displayed in Jesus, Jew of Nazareth, and to follow where he calls them. Conquer doubt with faith, O God. We pray for peace in the world. Disarm weapons, silence guns, and put out ancient hate that smolders still or flames in sudden conflict. Create goodwill among people of every race and nation. Bring peace to earth, O God. Keep families in your love, O God. We pray for young and old. Give patient, impatient youth true vision and experienced age openness to new things. Let both praise your name, that your name might be glorified. Join youth and age together in good fellowship, O Lord. We pray for all men everywhere. May they come into their own as sons of God and inherit the kingdom prepared in Jesus Christ, the Lord of all and Savior of the world. Hear our prayers, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who prays for us and with us, to whom be praise forever and ever. Amen. Listen now for the word of God. Scripture readings, Psalm 115, Romans 1, verses 16 to 25, and Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak, eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear, no noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel, feet, but do not walk, and they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them, so do all who trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down to, into the silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and, and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Romans 1, 16 to 25. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written. The righteous shall live by faith, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish, foolish hearts were darkened. 
Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen. Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. With this call, the psalmist is challenging some misconceptions that the world holds, misconceptions that get us off track from living life as it was intended to be lived. We are told we can be all that we want to be, or that life's purpose is to bring glory to ourselves, or so we can leave a legacy, a name for ourselves. But being focused on ourselves will not bring us contentment for long or satisfaction in living our lives as life was intended to be lived. The Presbyterians among you know this, that the Westminster Shorter Catechism begins its teaching about God by asking this very probing question, what is man's chief end? In other words, the very first question we need to ask is, what's life all about? What are we here for? And it probes that most existential question of all times. For what purpose then have we been made? And the answer given in the catechism is this. Man's chief end or purpose is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's such a wonderful phrase, isn't it? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. We don't always think of either of those things as what we are called to do every moment of every day. To glorify him, to be like him, to lift his name up, that God can be exalted among us above all else or to enjoy him. Who would have thought that our duty was to enjoy, especially amongst us old Presbyterians? We're considered sometimes a grouchy bunch, which is a true slander. I know we're not, but anyway, sometimes they say that. But we are in our catechism told we're to enjoy and I think that's a wonderful thing I wish we did it better and more often more completely so the psalmist gives a similar answer around this issue 
warning us away from the error, saying, not to us, O Lord, not to us. It's not about us. It's about your name being glorified. And some hearing that answer will balk at it and say it's simply putting ourselves down, that we should exalt ourselves and praise ourselves and think well of ourselves. But in reality, just the opposite is true. For when we forget about ourselves, in a sense, and concentrate on him and worship him, that's when true joy comes. That's when we have that sense of purpose for why we were made. And the sense of purpose that gives completion. For this calling involves us in the highest of desires, the highest calling in the cosmos, which is to focus our lives on the Supreme Being, who alone is all wise, all righteous, all powerful, and the fulfillment of all truth that sets free. The psalmist gives additional reasons, too, why we should focus our lives on bringing glory to God. And that is because, he says, we know God is a God of love and of faithfulness. God is the covenanting God who has called us to himself and then given us a task to do that matters. And so we are significant people. Why? Because we are doing a significant work for a significant God, the God above all gods. John in his gospel reminds us of this also, saying in the words of that very familiar verse, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. That's often a misconception. But God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the good news. That's the gospel. In the epistles also, we are told again that God is love. He's the very definition of love. God is love, it says. For God is the covenanting God who keeps his word always and promises are kept, the wonderful promises. And so we live for him because he is a covenanting God who is absolutely trustworthy in his dealings with us. But as soon as these words are spoken, it seems the psalmist hears in the background protests. He hears the complaint, God is not faithful. What do you mean God is always faithful? What about when bad things happen? Especially what happens when bad things happen to good people. Where is God then? Many people today, and you hear it on the newscasts all the time, they no longer believe in God. And churches are emptying out because there is evil in the world and God is blamed for it. Who causes these wars? Who causes these famines? Who causes all sorts of wicked things? It must be God. And if God is good, it doesn't look good to me, they say. So I'm going to take my own judgment and I don't believe in God anymore. How can these things happen if God is good and is all-powerful? There have been centuries, indeed millennia, when philosophers and theologians have sought to give answer to that question, where is God? 
But the psalmist's answer is to remind people, the people of faith, that God is sovereign. And so the psalmist says to them, our God is in heaven and does whatever pleases him. God is sovereign. That is, he is the absolute ruler. He has the final say over all things. And that might be alarming if we thought his judgment was arbitrary or if we thought he was victims or if, as the ancient Greeks thought, the people were merely the playthings of the gods. But the psalmist reminds us that his nature is loving and his action is faithful. And in that context, God is working out his purposes in the world, not in a vindictive way, not in a careless way, not in an inadequate way, but in a way that brings completion and fulfillment. He is in heaven where we remember his ways are as high above the heavens as the heavens are high above the earth. He is promised, as the scripture reminds us, that Christians facing difficult situations today can take comfort in the words of the prophet Jeremiah, knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us from every hardship or suffering, but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives. And regardless of our current situation, he can work through it to prosper us and give us hope. Remind yourselves in the worst of times of that truth. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Oh, that's why his plans are for. To prosper us. To give us hope. To ensure our future. That's the very nature of God. And so we don't need to be afraid I was visiting my grandson the other day, and he was telling me about black holes. He's only about five years old. He's telling me about black holes in the universe and how they swallow you up. And he was getting a little concerned about, was there any black holes nearby? <laughs> he might get swallowed up. And uh, the answer so that he doesn't need to be afraid of anything, is that God's in charge of black holes. Nothing can happen to you apart from what God desires. And God desires only good things. God desires that you have a future. So even if there was a black hole that swallowed you up, he'd be on the other side, and it'd be good. <laughs> and Paul, in the New Testament, reminds us that the promise of Jeremiah has not changed. He says, remember, God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I hope we always remember that above all, that we remember that, that we might have the peace of God in our hearts because we know what God is. We know his nature is love. We know his promises are faithful. We know his desire and plan for us is complete and good and to prosper us. It pleases God to bless his people and to covenant with them in the cooperative work of bringing in his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, just as he taught us to pray. He says, I'm going to teach you to pray so you'll know what I want for you and you can ask for me to fulfill it. And he says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what his plan is. 
that things on earth might be as they are in heaven. And we are part of the plan to see that come to being because we are imitators of Jesus, imitators of God. And when we act like that, we give glory to God. And that's the kingdom of God revealed once more, a little more clearly than it was yesterday. Because today you've let blessed your neighbor, you've loved your brother and sister. So those who make the complaint and ask, where is Israel's God? The psalmist now ridicules them for not seeing the things they treat as gods are pathetic in comparison. That their substitute gods is not going to bring the completion and fulfillment that the true God does. Their gods have the appearance of wealth and power being covered in precious metals, but in fact, they have no absolute power and are merely man-made substitutes. They are dysfunctional and have only the appearance of power. They have mouths, the psalmist says, but they say nothing. They have eyes, but the eyes don't see. They have ears, but they don't listen. Noses that don't smell, feet that don't take them anywhere throats that don't make a sound. Worst of all, those who make them or trust in them, the psalmist says, you become like them, dead imitations of a life, lifeless with only the appearance of true life. The psalmist pleads then with his people not to worship false idols and phony gods and but to trust in the one true God who is their authentic help and protector. He addresses the priests, the descendants of Aaron, he calls them, to also trust in the Lord. And this comes with the promise that God will bless those who fear him, both the small and the great, in the eyes of the Lord. The psalmist reminds them, as I remind you again today, that God's plans for his people are always to bring them into blessing. That's comforting, surely. No matter what's happening in your life, no matter what calamity is happening, you know this, that God is going to bring us into blessing. It's for sure God is going to work it together for good because you love him and are called according to his purpose. And nothing nothing in this world and there seems to be lots of calamities to pick from i could have done a whole page of stuff gone wrong with the world but i need only one thing to remind you of and that is god is faithful in the midst of all calamities in the world and you're going to be okay you're going to be okay because god says so three times he repeats that he will bless he will bless Israel, the people of God. He will bless Aaron, the priests of God. He will bless believers who fear the Lord. The Lord will prosper you, and in the sense of covenant, the blessing of God is not just for believers, but also for their children. The blessing is both for you and your children. Sometimes we worry about our children. We wonder what's going to happen to them, and some of them have wandered from the church. And it grieves our hearts, it breaks our hearts. For we know the most precious thing in all the world is the thing that they have resisted and not accepted and not being completed in. And yet, God says, I haven't forgotten your children. They may have forgotten me. <laughs> but I haven't forgotten them. And so we continue to pray for them and to give God the glory that that glory of God might be revealed to our children. This is how generous our God is, who even includes those who seem to have little to offer. And the Lord who will do all this, we are reminded, is not like the idols, mere form, 
here. Pretend. But he is, in fact, says the psalmist. And remember this, he says, he's the maker of heaven and earth. That's who we're talking about, the creator of all things, of the farthest galaxies and of all the black holes you can imagine. Again, he is almighty, for the highest heaven belongs to the Lord. And humankind only has activity and blessing on the earth because God has made it so, says the psalmist. Remember, all that you think you can do, all that you think you have, it all depends on God. And who can live out this covenant with God? On the earth it will be the living, he says, not those who serve dead or false images. It's mostly man who can give glory and praise to the Lord. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. This is the reason we were made, and this is the power God gives us. And then it seems that the end of all of this reflection that the psalmist gives, he can't help himself. Praise the Lord, he says, or hallelujah, if you want to put it in Jewish. Hallelujah. It's as if he says, come on, let's just get on with it. Let's give God the glory. That's what we're here to do. Jesus tells the parable then of the ten virgins, which is affirming again that our focus in every, in every moment of, every, of our lives needs to be on the coming of the Lord Jesus. It needs to be about God. All our focus is on that. And this is a story of five who had focus and five who didn't. Five called wise because of their focus and five called foolish because they weren't prepared. They were all getting ready for the bridegroom to come. And we remember Jesus is the great bridegroom of heaven to whom we shall share the great bridal feast in heaven one day at the end of time. They were getting ready for the bridegroom to come so they could fellowship with him. But five didn't plan ahead so that they could enter the celebration. And so the master came when they weren't ready and weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing, and they were shut out. We then are warned by this parable of Jesus to be wise, to prepare to give glory to the bridegroom when he comes. Otherwise, we may not, he may not know us, and we will miss out on the celebration of life. Jesus' last words are these, Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. He's coming again. We don't know when, so we need to be ready all the time. And how do you get ready all the time? By giving him glory. Glory by the way you speak. Glory by the deeds you do. Glory by the fellowship you keep. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. It's our calling then in all we think, in all we do, in all we say, to at all times and in all places, be living in ways that we are giving glory to the name of the Lord. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior, to him be the glory, the majesty, the power and the authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray.
Remember, O Lord, the peoples of the world divided into many nations and tongues. Deliver us from every evil that gets in the way of your saving purpose and fulfill the promise of peace on earth among men and women with whom you are pleased, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the curse of war and the sin of man that causes war, O Lord, deliver us. From pride that turns its back on you and from unbelief that will not call you Lord, O Lord, deliver us. From national vanity that poses as patriotism, from loud mouth boasting and blind self-worship that admit no guilt, O Lord, deliver us. From the high self-righteousness that will not compromise, and from selfishness that gains by the oppression of others, O Lord, deliver us. From the lust for money or power that drives people to kill, O Lord, deliver us. From trusting in the weapons of war and mistrusting the counsels of peace, O Lord, deliver us. From hearing, believing, and speaking lies about other nations, O Lord, deliver us. From groundless suspicions and fears that stand in the way of reconciliation, O Lord, deliver us. From words and deeds that encourage discord, prejudice, and hatred. From everything that prevents the human family from fulfilling your promise of peace and your glory, O Lord, deliver us. We pray and name before you in the silence those in our midst, those in our fellowship who are sick and needy. You know their needs better than we do, but hear in the silence our prayer for them, O Lord. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Now may the love of God our Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day this hour, this week, this year, our whole life, now and forevermore. Amen. Let's sing together, to God be the glory. And let's all mean it, of course we will, but let's be sure we focus. God be the glory, and may he be glorified indeed in our singing. First, we're going to have the offering with the doxology, but the offering's been taken, so the doxology will be sung. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. To you be the glory, and may we show forth your glory by the generosity with which we have made these gifts, generous in heart, generous in action. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Thank you. Yeah. 
For he heard my voice, for he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. And when I was in great need, he saved me. <laughs> 